How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Today I'm just going to do a bit of an equipment overview. It's getting close to the end of the year so I want to show you guys what I use, what I would recommend for beginners, and we'll add some pricing and stuff in there as well to give you a good idea of what what the minimum requirements are to get into this opal carving. Honestly, it's not a huge financial investment at all. If you've got the time, that's that's the uh, that's the real killer. It will kill your time. So we'll just start off with number one. This is probably actually one of the least important parts, but this here is what I'm using currently. As long as you've got something that can spin the cutting tools, you're good. This is a Ozito rotary tool, about $50 Australian. I'll convert it to US and post it up in the video as well, because I know a lot of you viewers are from the US, so that'll help a bit. And all I recommend is that whatever you're using, whatever motor you're using to spin, just get yourself a flex shaft. It gives you so much mobility. Here I've got a uh, cutting disc mounted on it at the moment, so I was just slicing up a stone. And yeah, it, this provides so much value. It's This is literally just something that turns and spins. This is what really gets the work done. Get a nice hand piece and you're, you're flying. That's really all you need. You can spend a lot of money on a, on a uh, rotary flex shaft, but at the same time you can spend less than, less than 50 bucks. So now we'll switch over to the desk and look at some of the actual tools. So number one, I'll just go over a few, few bits and pieces. Earmuffs, when the rotary tool's sitting right above your head, you, well right next to your ears, you're really going to want that. It helps a hell of a lot. Silicosis, avoiding gear. So just a mask, uh, P2 minimum. Disposable ones are fine, they're cheap and you can just keep getting rid of them. Don't wear them too long because the dust will get all over them eventually. Keep them in Ziploc bags. Safety glasses. Safety glasses are really good. I also actually have a splatter shield. If you search the channel you'll be able to see it. It's hard to get on camera, especially when it's covered in boulder opal at the moment. Anything that's going to protect your eyes from bits that go flying. If you've got spinning tools you're always going to you're always going to have problems with that. So. Talking of the spinning tools, I'm a bit torn on this one. If you're really starting out and you don't even know if you're going to enjoy the hobby or anything like that, you might just do one stone then give up. Electroplated burrs are probably the way to go. This pack of 50 can cost you, I don't know, like 20 Aussie, 25 Aussie, something like that. They've gone up in price a bit lately, but everything has, hasn't it? So we, we will just have to live with that. The problem with these are that they will last only a very short period of time. So you'll get through a couple of stones with one of these, and that's just because the diamond coating is literally a coating. So you've just got this metal, and then you've got these little diamonds that are kind of glued on, that kind of incorporated into the outer coating of the metal. So glued is probably not the right term because it doesn't use a glue, but they're bound to the, they're electroplatedly bound to the surface. So once you're grinding away at a stone, What's going to happen is that these little diamonds are going to come off and there's no there's no stopping that. Use plenty of water, take it nice and easy and they'll last longer. But still, they're only going to last until the diamond coating comes off. That is why I would recommend anyone that's serious about getting into this to go for a sintered diamond kit. Now when I started, I didn't do this because these locally would cost me 140 Australian dollars and these got... I got them for less than 20 this set in particular but now I have bit the bullet and started finding a manufacturer and supplying these and I, I sell them for what like 70 at the moment or 80 at the moment so if there's any local supplier that supplies them for a reasonable amount I would still definitely go over these one set of these is going to last many dozen sets of these and they're just a it's an all-round better experience so yeah you're looking for sintered diamond that way instead of being a coating the diamonds go right to the middle if you sliced one of these down the guts you'll see that in the middle there's a little bit of a little bit of a center part that they kind of center onto but then diamonds will go all the way down to that core next up diamond pacific nova points there are many of them this is the full range so it goes from 60 all the way through to 50,000. i don't recommend getting all of them so you can get the 60, the 60 is somewhat useful, but typically there's a set of four that comes comes from 280, 600, 1200, 3000. This, after a high grit sintered diamond burr, will get you through pretty much all opal carving. Other stones you may actually want to venture down and get a 60 grit. And even for some types of opal, it is nice to get the 50,000 to get a polish. Though, typically we would use a metal oxide polish, which we'll talk about in a minute. But there are some cases where the 50,000 is really useful in terms of boulder opal mainly. So that ironstone actually polishes quite quite well with the 50,000. I haven't played with it enough, but it is pretty good. 
And these kits, if you're in the US, you're real lucky because they are cheap as. I currently get my supply from Suva. Suva are fantastic. They're US based and Diamond Pacific manufacture these. These guys sell them for an incredibly good price. They've also got things like scented diamond burrs and basically anything that I'm going to talk about today. If you're in the US, these guys are a great, great resource and they help me supply them cheaper in Australia as well. So a set of four, the standard set that I sell is 70, 70, to $80 for the large or small. Next up, this is a pretty small one, but cutting wheel, you are, as much as you hate it, or as much as you will hate it, trust me, you will need a cutting cutting disc at some point. So mounting one of these into your, into your Dremel or rotary tool will help you greatly when you want to slice off big chunks or when you want to separate color bars which is something i'm doing at the moment this will really help out and you just can't you can't get away with not having them this is electroplated just like these other these other burrs here so it's only a metal coating that's only because i don't like using sintered they're a little bit too brittle whereas these worst case scenario you get a warp and it like kicks your stone away or it kicks away but the sintered ones i find them to be a little bit brittle and a little bit scary and they're also a lot thicker so you can get these ones nice and thin, and sometimes you want to do a real thin cut. You need one of these if you don't have a trim saw. If you're just sticking to carving, grab a set. They cost absolutely nothing. I can't even give an estimate of the price. You can get massive bags of 10 pieces and stuff for just a couple dollars on whatever online retailer you use. Similar story actually to these. So these are just dense felt burrs. You want to get ones that aren't too wiry. If you have a close look here, and you see the edge, you don't want to see wiry strands coming off. You want to see this nice little fluffiness. The fluffiness is good, strands not good. So you want a nice little dense fur, and then you want to use metal polishing compound, metal oxide polishing compounds or diamond paste. Diamond paste, I actually use wooden, homemade wooden dowel tips, but the felt can also work quite well. They just deteriorate much quicker. So that brings us on to the metal oxide. So this is a cerium oxide. This is a super cerium oxide and super is not just there to make it sound cool or anything like that. It's not overly cool anyway. This is a grade of cerium oxide. Optical grade is the minimum you want, but honestly, if you can find a, de a decent supply, the idea is that the color doesn't matter so much, but it's the particle size that is, that's what dictates the grade. So it doesn't really matter if there's a few impurities and your cerium oxide starts going a little bit yellow or a little bit pink. As long as it's a really fine grit cerium oxide, go for that. It's a little bit more expensive than the cerium oxide, though I've manufactured, I've got this stuff manufactured and I'm selling it from the same price. But if you're not in Australia, that's much harder. I will sell internationally sometimes, but it's a bit of a stretch. If you can, get the highest quality cerium oxide you can get. I used the optical grade for a while and you can get a finish, but this will speed up the process so much and it will give you a better finish. So trust me, if you can get a better quality cerium oxide, it's worth doing. You can also go aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide is also pretty good. Some people like tin oxide, but I tend to go with cerium oxide or aluminium oxide. There's videos on the channel to explain why, but yeah, I sell these packs for $15 per 100 grams at the moment, Australian. So that's a kind of price guide for what you should aim for. Now, a recent addition, Riley Gunn, 53 Frogs, Opal Auctions. His little torch that he sells. It's got the white light, it's got the yellow light, and it's got the UV light. I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than that. On top of that, it's got the small beam thing here. You can also use it as a general torch by just popping off the beam shrinker, the beam focuser, and then you've got yourself a nice three-way light there as well, and you can use it just as a regular torch. An absolutely amazing product. I've only had it now for a little while, but I can already say this is the by far the greatest little gem torch that I've used in the past. I've been doing some pretty ghetto ghetto alternatives, but this is uh, really good. And I think I was surprised, and this is like 35 USD or maybe $50 AUD. And last but not least, sometimes you just can't hold on to, especially small stones, overly effectively while you're carving. So that's when I recommend dopping. And for dopping, these chopsticks, free. Buy a pack of sushi for lunch, and they don't actually charge you for the chopsticks. So you can grab a couple packets, pretend you're buying lunch for friends, Walk off with five packets, you've got free dop sticks for a while. You can cut them in half. Nice six inches is a pretty good, pretty good size. 
And then this is three different dopping options that you've got. So dopping wax, green dopping wax for opal, it's the lowest melting temperature wax. So it doesn't require you to heat the stone so much. They're a bit sensitive to heat. Super glue, just standard super glue. The thicker the better. Well, it's not better, but it's easier to use if it's thicker. So that's always an op option. And then my personal favorite, is a five minute epoxy i've got it right here five minute epoxy very user friendly very beginner friendly doesn't take any skill whatsoever as long as you can mix it you're all good little mixing stick there the only thing to keep in mind is five minutes it's that's when it starts getting tacky it's not going to set in five minutes you want to be preparing these the day before and just do a whole batch mix up some glue you can use it for quite a while and then yeah just drop a whole heap of stones they'll be ready for you tomorrow when you're running out of stones, drop some more. Very easy. Honorable mention as well, stencils and or a decent set of calipers. Don't go with the battery operated ones. I hate the, I hate digital ones. Just learn how to read a uh, proper, proper set of calipers and you'll be good to go. It's really nice. Even when you're doing carvings, it's good to kind of get an idea of the stone sizes and what you can do. But if you're calibrating cabs, then you've got to, you've got to have something that's going to measure it precisely. And the stencils are actually incredibly unreliable, especially if you've got a set like mine that are from China that cost nothing. And these, you can you can get a decent set of these for well under 100 bucks, Even under $50, you can get decent ones. Maybe don't go for a plastic alternative, but something that's going to... Something that you've got confidence in measuring with. And yeah, there you have it. I've made a mess of my cutting desk, but... I hope that that helps a lot of you guys. It's good to do a recap each year on the equipment that I'm using. It hasn't evolved too much at the moment. The latest edition is this this guy here, but I think this year it's still created this and the aluminium oxide. I've sorted out the supply pretty well now for Sinter Diamond Burrs and I can keep them in stock. Super helps me as, uh, as best they can, keeping stock of things like the Nova Points, but it's been really hard getting stuff from the US with exchange rates and all that kind of nightmarish stuff but i will be getting back in touch with them and restocking the store as well for all us aussies get some cheaper goods because yeah these are all the things that i kind of i use all the time like every day in terms of total cost for everything as well as a rotary tool and stuff i think i would be saying about 250 australian dollars it, the price might vary depending on where you are. I know in Europe you guys have a real struggle getting some of these tools because I've been selling selling and sending stuff over there just to help you guys out because even with crazy postage, it's still cheaper somehow. But yeah, around here, I would say everything... I could get this entire thing started again with 250 bucks and be pretty comfortable. That's still with Sintered Diamonds not going to the desperate need of Electroplated. So hopefully that helps you give a get a bit of an estimate and maybe convinces you to get into it. It's it's not that expensive. It's time. If you've got time, it's it's easy. If time is really hard to come by and really expensive, then uh, that's when you've that's when you've got problems. But we all need something to burn our time after hours on, and this is what I choose. So it's a lot of fun. You get some great stones out of it. So by all means, think about it. At least this gives you a bit of an idea. And I will get back to carving now, once I pack up my desk. See you guys around.